Thanks for watching this explanation of how AlphaGo works. This is a really interesting algorithm that uses three policy networks and a value network in order to facilitate tree search for the highly complex game of Go, which is challenging because there are a lot of moves that you can make at each state, and then there's a lot of states, there's a lot of depth to the tree when you're doing tree search for a game like Go. In this video, we're gonna explain how the three different policy networks, the rollout policy, the supervised learning policy, and the policy trained with self play and policy gradients are trained and how they're used in the Monte Carlo tree search for AlphaGo, as well as the value network. We're gonna look at other characteristics of the paper, uh, different details that makes this algorithm work, and hopefully you get a sense of how AlphaGo works, how Monte Carlo tree search works, and how these reinforcement learning agents are used to facilitate Monte Carlo tree search. This video is in a series on AlphaGo to Mu0, inspired by the Kaggle Connect X competition, which I highly recommend checking out. AlphaGo uses a tree search known as Monte Carlo tree search. In many of these game playing AIs and games like Checkers, you can construct these trees where you start with the current position of the board, then you branch it out with every action you can possibly take, and you continue this until you reach the end of the game, and you can use this tree search in order to plan out your moves. But in games like chess and Go, the branching factor and the number of moves that you can make at each position is too large, and then the depth of the tree is too large as well. So you can't just construct a perfect tree and do an exhaustive search of all the things that could possibly happen with the game Go because the space is too large. So the idea here is that they're gonna approximate the Monte Carlo tree search by using policy and value networks, which are these deep uh, convolutional neural networks that are mapping from this high dimensional state representation of the Go board, as well as some handcrafted features in the Alpha Go paper into low dimensional representations. And they can output actions in the policy networks and estimate the winning probability from a given state in the value network. So the key idea here is that there are three policy networks, two of which are trained with supervised learning on expert moves to copy exactly the moves made by experts, and then one is trained with self-play and policy gradients to have this uh, optimal agent that is used to train the value network to predict the uh, winning probability from a current state. So these are combined into the Monte Carlo tree search in order to uh, have a better Monte Carlo tree search by using the function approximation of the policy and value networks. This image from their paper provides a great overview as to how they use the three different policy networks that they're training. So they have two networks that are trained with supervised learning on the human expert moves. So they're being trained to map the, exactly from the state representation into the actions taken by human experts. So the idea here is that there are two of these networks. There's the rollout policy, and then there's the uh, supervised learning policy network denoted P sub sigma and P sub pi. So the idea here is that the rollout policy is a smaller network. It, it has much faster inference. So when you do the Monte Carlo simulation and you want to go from a given state all the way to the end of the game, use this rollout policy because it takes two microseconds per inference compared to three milliseconds for this network. So the idea is that the rollout policy is used in the Monte Carlo tree search and then the supervised learning policy network is used in two ways. For, first, it's used to initialize this reinforcement learning policy network, but then it's also used later on to control the branching factor of the Monte Carlo tree search, which we'll get into. So the supervised learning policy network, the larger one, initializes this uh, reinforcement learning policy network. So then what happens is the policy network is trained by playing against itself and updating its parameters by using policy gradients in order to increase its winning, you know, increase the moves that lead to wins against previous iterations of itself. So in this way, they construct a data set from the self-playing, which is used to train the value network. So the reinforcement learning policy network isn't used at the end of AlphaGo. It's only used to construct this data set that's used to train the value network. So the value network is a regression model that is predicting wins from given states from the self-play data set. So the value network is gonna end up being used in the Monte Carlo tree search to kind of replace the subtree by having a value estimate of what would happen if you went down that path. And behind AlphaGo is the Monte Carlo tree search. So a lot of these game playing AI systems use these tree searches where you start in a position and then you simulate all the possible actions that could go from that position and you construct the tree in this way to make moves that seem the most promising. But the problem with games like Go and Chess is that they have a really high branching factor and that the games are really long as well, so the tree is really deep. So the idea here is that we're using the policy networks to reduce the breadth. So rather than seeing every possible action we could possibly take from a state, we're only gonna sample and assign uh, probability and explore the actions that are likely to be taken by the policy network. And this is the policy network in the Monte Carlo tree search that's trained with supervised learning on the expert move data set. So we're also gonna truncate the depth by using value networks. So rather than go all the way to the end of the tree, you can get a sense of how good the state already is by using this value network. There's a regression model that predicts the winning probability given a state. The way they train policy networks with supervised learning is you have the Y and the Y prime, where the Y is the ground truth label, that is the expert move, the way that the expert took the action given the state, and then Y prime is this policies mapping from action to state. 
So you have 30 million positions from the KGS Go server that are used as the data set for the supervised learning algorithm. So the idea here is that the uh, bigger network is a 13 layer policy network that reaches 57% accuracy on this data set, and then the smaller rollout policy reaches 24.2% accuracy, but the key difference between them is the inference time. So you got two microseconds for the rollout policy to make a prediction of action given state, whereas you have three milliseconds for the larger network. This plot shows the relationship between training accuracy on the KGS supervised learning data set and the AlphaGo winning rate when playing against the final match version of AlphaGo and the supervised learning networks. So the idea here is that you're seeing the difference between varying the number of filters in the convolutional neural network and then also observing this trend that as you have a higher training accuracy on the supervised learning data set, you also tend to have a higher winning rate against the final version of AlphaGo. The supervised learning network is mapping from state to action, as is the value network and the policy network later on is trained with policy gradients. So what is the state representation or the input to the neural networks for the policy and value networks? So first, the first feature map is this 19 by 19 board position where you see the Go game. Then there are also these 47 different features that are transformed into this shape in order to form the input to the convolutional neural network. So you have these different planes of these feature maps, sort of the depth dimension of this tensor that's going as the input to the convolutional neural network that are formed with these different handcrafted features about the Go game. The network has been trained with supervised learning. It's used to initialize a new policy network that's going to be trained with self-play and policy gradients. So the idea behind updating the parameters with policy gradients is that you have this partial derivative with respect to the parameters of the policy gradient that are the responsible for selecting this action given this state. So the idea is that you're going to update these parameters with the derivative that's going to be taking this probability and multiplying it by the return. So if the return is plus one, you're going to increase the likelihood of taking these actions given these states, or if it's minus one, you're going to decrease the probability of taking these actions. So optimizing the policy directly using this technique is really just saying, you know, increase the actions that result in more wins and decrease the actions that make me lose. Once this policy network has been trained with self-play and policy gradients, it wins more than 80% of games against the supervised learning network, and it wins more than 85% of the games against this baseline Pachi algorithm that has 100,000 Monte Carlo simulations per move. So the previous state-of-the-art without the convolutional neural network only won 11% of the games against this Pachi baseline. So the idea here is that the convolutional neural network that is extracting the features from the input representation to make the uh, policy network work is the key, is the real MVP behind this algorithm. It's what's making, the, uh, what's making it work compared to previous iterations so far. The application of our policy network that's trained with self-play and policy gradients is to train this value network that's going to predict the winning probability of a given state. So the idea is that the naive approach of training this on that KGS supervised learning data set results in a lot of overfitting due to strongly correlated states. So you have these sequences of states that are all part of the same game. So they all have the same label and it's not this uh, identically and independently distributed uh, data batch that is important for supervised learning. So you have this 0.9 training mean squared error, but then 0.37 test mean squared error. So the new idea is that they're gonna construct a self-play data set from the self-play with the policy network and they're going to use this in order to train the value network, and it has much less uh, overfitting. So it's also really interesting that they have 30 million distinct positions, each sampled from a separate game. So definitely a pretty intensive uh, data collection process. Now we have a sense of the four neural networks used in AlphaGo. Three policy networks, a rollout policy that has less accuracy but has faster inference, which we'll now see why that's useful in the context of the Monte Carlo tree search. We have the supervised learning policy network, and then we have the policy network that's trained with self-play and policy gradients. So those are our three policy networks that are trained in AlphaGo. And then we have the fourth neural network, which is the value estimator that predicts the value of a state up to the end of the episode. So it's predicting the winning probability given a state. So now let's look at the Monte Carlo tree search, which ties this all together to form the AlphaGo agent. So this consists of a four-step pipeline of selection, expansion, evaluation, and backup. So the way selection works is that you start with a given state. So say some configuration of the Go board or some configuration of a chess board or something like that. And then you simulate different actions that you can take. You know, you simulate the actions your opponent might take in order to form this tree. So the idea here is that each edge in the tree has this uh, like weight to it of this Q plus U of P, which the next slide will get into exactly how this Q plus U of P is used to assign weight to each of the edges in the tree search. So you're taking the max. So you're going to go in the direction with the largest of this Q plus U of P value all the way until you reach a leaf node. So when you reach a leaf node, you now need to expand the leaf node. So the way that they do this is they use the uh, policy network trained with supervised learning, which I put this quote here because I think it's really interesting and worthwhile to note that they don't use the policy network trained with self-play and policy gradients to do the expansion. Rather, they use this policy network trained with supervised learning 
saying that it's because the humans select a more diverse set of moves compared to the policy gradient uh, agent. So once they do this, they expand it, then they construct this new node, and then they use the rollout policy to simulate it all the way to the end of the episode, and then get this win that they're going to use to combine into this Q plus U of P of the new node. So this is the idea of the, pol of the rollout policy and why it's useful. Because you can simulate it, it only takes two microseconds per inference compared to the three milliseconds. So you can do something like roll it out all the way to the end of the episode. And that's where the name Monte Carlo comes in. Monte Carlo describes algorithms that like simulate to get answers. So you're simulating an episode, Monte Carlo with the rollout policy, to get a better sense of this uh, node in the tree. The Monte Carlo tree search selects which node to further explore by taking the max of this Q plus U of P value. So now we'll look at exactly how this is derived. So this is a combination of this uh, Q, S, T, A, the state and the action, plus the U of this state and the action. So the U is constructed based on the prior probability assigned by the policy network. So the policy network assigns like a density, like a probability density on each of the actions. So say it might, uh, so you have four actions, A1, A2, A3, A4. The policy network might say something like 30%, 20%, 10%, 40%. So it has this distribution over the probability that you're using to construct this U, S of A. And then you put it over the one plus the number of times that you visited this uh, state. So when you're doing the Monte Carlo simulation, you're going to do this like a thousand times. So you're going to keep going down the tree and you're going to be incrementing the count of how many times you visited the node. So it's this idea of UCB, upper confidence bound and reinforcement learning, where you're going to encourage exploration by uh, weighting it negatively by how many times you visited the node. So this is where you get the US of A from. So then you get this uh, QST of A which is formed by a combination of the number of times you visited the state as well as the value estimate. So the value estimate is now where that value network comes into play as well as the rollout policy. So the value network is going to make a guess on whether we win or lose from this state. So say this uh, value network outputs like 0 0.6 or something. And then the rollout policy is going to go simulate the whole episode, this Monte Carlo simulation, and return either 1 or 0, win or lose. So then you're going to blend in the contribution of the value network as well as the rollout policies result with this lambda parameter. So, you know, lambda controls whether you're emphasizing more on the value network or on the result from the rollout policy. This table shows the results from AlphaGo controlling for different factors, sort of in like an ablation study, comparing it with different variants, whether you use the rollouts, whether you use the value network, and then different parameters like the lambda mixing constant, and then the distributed implementation, which affects how many simulations you can make in the Monte Carlo. So you can see the different ELO ratings, which, you know, higher is better in this chart. And then the most interesting characteristic of this is that the, without the rollouts, you get a pretty high ELO reading, which is leading us into AlphaGo Zero, the next paper. But another interesting characteristic of the AlphaGo paper is their distributed implementation, the way that they implement the uh, neural network inference by using eight GPUs and having the 48 CPUs. So you can see how you have these uh, convolutional neural networks that take in this 19 by 19 by 48 input, and then they map it through by using the convolutions. So this is accelerated enormously by doing it in parallel on the GPUs. So AlphaGo uses 40 search threads, 48 CPUs, and 8 GPUs, but, and then their distributed AlphaGo algorithm uses 40 search threads with 1,202 CPUs and 176 GPUs. So you can see further on the asynchronous and distributed Monte Carlo tree search in the paper if you're interested. Thanks for watching this explanation on AlphaGo in the series Game Playing AI AlphaGo to Mu Zero. I hope from this video you were able to take away how the policy networks and the value network are used in Monte Carlo tree search. I think this is the key idea to understanding the first algorithm in this series, AlphaGo. The key idea is that they use the policy networks and the value network in order to have a more efficient tree search, and that's how they reduce the search space of the Go game with the enormous breadth, the branching factor, and the depth of the tree when you're trying to do tree search for a game with a high complexity like Go or chess. And they use these reinforcement learning networks in order to facilitate the tree search. So I hope that was clear in this video. If not, please leave uh, questions. Thanks for watching and please subscribe to Henry AI Labs for more deep learning and AI videos.